What is up guys, it's your boy Gonzo and welcome back to a new video. Today I'm gonna show you guys how to sample like a god in FL Studio and by god I mean how to sample better because sampling is fun and everyone should know how to do it. But before we jump into the video I just wanted to say that I released Gonzo's bundle kit which is basically a collection of drum kits and loop packs, five of each, for a really good price. And these drum kits and loop packs are a total value of $110 and you can get them for $45. The drum kits and the loop packs specifically are the XXL kit, the bounce kit, drum kit volume 5, the phone kit, the plug kit, and the loop packs from 9 to 13. And this bundle kit is a limited time offer, it's only going to be on the website for a week, so if you want to get them, you should get them now. These are my favorite drum kits to use, so if you guys want to support me and get these, you have the link in the description. Now, let's go back to the main video. Sampling. Anyone can sample, you can just, you know, look up samples and then download them and drag them in FL and loop them to like four bars and that's it. But today I'm going to show you guys some tips I guess on uh, making sampling easier and not having to deal with stretching and restretching every time you open the project. It's actually really simple but let's just jump into it. So for the sake of the video I went on YouTube on incognito so the searches won't be influenced by anything. So I'm just going to look up samples and we're going to be looking for some things that might sound good and sampleable because that's the thing you can try sampling anything but it might not come out good so just find something that you can actually hear yourself using usually you'll find a lot of playlists you can even look for samples playlist and you'll find even more and you can even narrow it down to a specific genre if you want some dark pianos if you want some dark stuff in general in this case i'm kind of feeling some i don't know let's see let, let's check this this trap samples playlist which has 638 songs basically which is a lot although i'm not gonna pick the first few ones i'm just gonna scroll down till we get to the middle or something so it's a bit more effort okay so now it's time to just get a basic chop of the thing going just remove the empty parts in the beginning and find the general loop of the of the song that you want to use so in this case i just want to use this but i'm gonna listen to the other parts too because when you're on youtube for random samples you generally only listen to, you know for a couple of seconds to get the idea of a song and if you find one you actually get to download it you still haven't listened to the whole thing so maybe there are still some hidden gems in the track that you want to use so i'm gonna listen to maybe not the whole thing just you know skim through it again and see if i find something that i like So I already found this part and how you can find loops. It's actually really easy. You can uh, either a use the metronome in the DAW. Uh, in this case, it's kind of wonky to use the metronome in FL while playing a song that you don't even know the BPM of, or you can basically teach yourself or just try to fill the track and find the bars yourself. So in this case, the, 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 even though I went in triplets, I still found the region to be, you know, four or eight bars, depending on the actual loop. So that's not going to be a problem. Maybe that wasn't the best example, but, you know, you can train yourself to feel the, the metronome. So let's say that this is all I want to use. So the very first part of the track and then this random part from the middle. You can kind of get an idea on if you have more than one chop, you can kind of imagine how a track would sound like based on which part is playing. So in this case, I want to use this as the main melody and this as an intro. So now we actually need to find the BPM. So these in length are somewhat close. I could either go super high and end up making a beat on 188. I could go all the way down and make a beat on 94 or I could find a middle ground, maybe a 120, and just stretch them and then resample them. Because after all, we are sampling, so we're not bound to use the track's BPM. And all we have to do, first of all, is make these unique as samples, or the fastest method, because if you make them unique as samples, you save them in the same folder as the melody. But if you lose that folder, or if you did what I did and saved the sample on my desktop, I'm most likely gonna delete the file after I'm done with the video. So if I come back to the beat, I won't have the melody. So what you can do is just move these out of the way, only keep the one that you actually want and make the selection like this. And all you gotta do is press Control, Alt and C. We are consolidating the track, basically how you can do it in Ableton by freezing and flattening it. And all you gotta do is just press Start. And this is basically rendering the track. And now you have an actual WAV file that's just the specific part. But now let's consolidate the second one as well. Now we have both of these as WAV files. And the reason why we did this instead of just making them unique is whenever you're stretching the file and then you close the project and you come back in, 
it's always going to be restretching it every time. You're going to see the progress bar up here and you're going to be like, oh, come on. If you want to play with the uh, the BPM, it's going to annoy you over time. So consolidating is a really good thing to do in general, not just when sampling. So as I said, we're going to be keeping this on 120. And since I have these or I have the regions, the general idea of the regions that I want to use, I can just try stretching them to four bars because that's the length that I want. And you can already see that it, it looks somewhat synchronized. It's somewhat on time. Now, here's the thing with this specifically, I could just keep it like this, or I could try changing the actual rhythm of the track. Now, since it has some arpeggiated notes in the beginning, it may be a problem whenever I want to change the rhythm, but in some cases it might actually help it, give it some more life. So what I'm going to try is just chop it like this and rearrange it. And by holding down Alt, you can actually move it freely. You can cut it as short or as long as you want it to be. So in this case, what I had in mind isn't going to work just because these two are basically the exact same notes as these two. So it's just going to sound weird because what I was planning to do was doing something like like this. You know what I mean? But what I could do is First of all, I need to find the pitch. There are multiple ways of finding the pitch. You can get KeyFinder. This free software, you could use uh, Antares's uh, auto key, which will automatically find the key. It doesn't really matter. As long as you find the key of the melody, you're good. So apparently this is in C major. Now, finding the actual scale, I don't know how much is going to help me personally, but I'm going to try to use my ear and see if I can make it sound better by keeping this rhythm and still keeping it somewhat in scale. So this is the best that I could do right now. Uh, if I were to take it lower, it's going to sound weird. If I take it up, it's going to sound even weirder. But, you know, let's give it a try. Actually, now that I think about it, while playing with it, I got another idea by just adding an extra note, note, making this one unique and actually taking this one down. But we did encounter one of the most known problems when sampling. And if you listen closely, ignore the actual melody, but focus on the transitions between the chops. You can sometimes hear a click. And that's a normal thing that happens when the audio just stops abruptly or there's no transition in between the notes or the, the sample. In this case, what we can do is just enable the declicking mode to generic which is i think the quickest one out of all of them you could use smooth but that's really long uh or transient which only does it at the end but i'm gonna go on generic and see how it sounds like and i'll probably enable this for the main melody as well as the uh second chop okay so now that we have the main melody that i want to be using with the drums and stuff I'm gonna move this one out of the way and let's go back to this one. Now, I know I didn't do much when it comes to the actual sampling part, just because the specific melody didn't really require the actual use of stretching and completely trying to rearrange it and whatever, you get what I mean. But this one might be a bit of a challenge because I think it also has drums and as I was counting the rhythm, I counted it in triplets. So we need to make this one work in four by four. And I'm also going to be stretching this one to four bars and slightly stretching it back since I cut the beginning. And you can see that it's not really on the grid. I mean, it is, but not perfectly. But if I were to change the grid to triplets, let's see if this follows it a bit more. And it does. In this case, I could just leave it the way it is, and I did, so I'm just not gonna show this part, because it was basically nothing. It wasn't the best example, so let's just move on. Mm -hmm. 
so you can do something like this or whatever any kind of drums really sampling specifically isn't really hard the hardest part is actually finding a good sample that you can actually work with and make a song with it i know i kind of chose a an easier sample i didn't expect it to be this easy but that's the game that's literally what sampling is sometimes you can run into super hard to use samples and sometimes you can just get these i'm not saying this sample specifically is the best i'm probably never going to use it again but as an example it's not really hard now you could always go and uh, fill in the mixer track and add the uh, new time which is basically a false alternative to ableton's warping and you could try getting a sample in so while they have made it easier to use it's still kind of you know probably still easier than just chopping and everything and making everything stretched out unique make it do that and stuff maybe yeah i guess and you can just simply you know put it in the timeline and just do your thing from here I'm not saying it's bad, it actually, it's actually gotten a lot better than what it used to be on, and how it used to be. So learning to use this as well, sure. The only thing is, it's a bit annoying having to go back and forth, dragging it in and doing the thing and then put it back in the timeline and then changing some things and then consolidating it and maybe you want to change it back and then you drag it back in new time. It's a bit of a hassle to use, honestly, but still, it's better than nothing. But yeah, I hope you guys managed to get something from this and learn something. Yeah, it was your boy Gunso. Thank you for watching this video. As I said in the beginning, you can get the bundle kit, which has five drum kits and five loop packs. If you guys want to support me, you can get it. You only have a week to do so. But yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.